Welcome to video two of three on diagnostic statistics. In this video, we'll discuss sensitivity, specificity, as well as positive and negative predictive values. Make sure you've seen video one, as this video refers to concepts from video one. By the end of the video, you'll be able to describe and calculate sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. And you'll be able to describe the relationship between positive and negative predictive value and prevalence. So let's start with the same population we did from before and apply a disease process, CHF or systolic heart failure. We see we have 15 patients in this population who have the disease of varying severity, some with more mild and some with more severe disease. The trick is we don't know which 15 patients they are. And so we need some sort of test that'll help us decide if this patient we're talking about actually has the disease or doesn't. And this test needs to have certain parameters. Ideally, it should be able to tell us who, who has the disease and who doesn't have the disease. We should also be able to know how much we can trust a positive answer for a test and how much we can trust a negative answer. No test in medicine is 100% perfect and no test will perfectly be able to tell you if a patient does or doesn't have a disease. Just like last time, we have a patient disease spectrum. In red, we see patients from very mild to very severe disease. And in blue, we see patients without disease. They can have absolutely no symptoms or they may start having very early disease. And there is some overlap. In green, you see a potential test that would identify patients with the disease. The ideal test would overlie perfectly with the red curve and only show us patients with disease and very minimally show us patients without the disease. Unfortunately, most tests aren't perfectly ideal. And so we have certain patients who have a positive test but don't actually have the disease. And these are called false positives. We have patients with a negative test who actually have the disease. And those are called false negatives. Luckily, we have patients who have the disease and have a positive test. And those are true positives. And we have patients who don't have the disease and have a negative test or true negatives. And all four of these will exist with any test in medicine if you test enough people. If we look at our population and pick a test called BNP or B-type natriuretic peptide, this is a protein that's made by the atria of the heart and is increased in some patients with systolic heart failure or CHF. If we pick this test and tested a person in the population, if it were positive, we're going to represent that with a green circle. If we check everybody in the population, we'll have certain, several results of this test. One thing you'll notice is we have 11 patients who have the disease and have a positive test. So those are our true positives. We also had three patients who had a positive test but didn't have the disease. We have four patients who have the disease but didn't get caught, and you'll notice these tend to be the patients with milder disease, and these are our false negatives. And lastly, we have 82 patients who didn't have the disease and had a negative test. So we have 82 true negatives. That's important information, but that doesn't help us to decide how much we trust the test. There are certain statistical parameters we can determine based on this information. In order to do that, we organize the information into a two by two table with those positive or negative for the disorder on the x-axis and positive and negative for the test on the y-axis. If we fill in our values, the table would look like this. Let's go to our first descriptive statistic, something called sensitivity. Sensitivity answers the question, did we catch everyone with the disease? Or it's the percentage of people with the disorder who have a positive test. The way to calculate that is take everybody with the disorder, true positives plus false negatives, and divide people with a positive test by that number. In this case, our sensitivity is 73%. A way to look at the graph of a very sensitive test would be a, se a test that captures everybody in red. And a test that's very sensitive has more true positives but also more false positives. It has fewer false negatives and true negatives. Because it has fewer false negatives, a sensitive test is very good to rule out a disease when it's negative. 
but when it's positive, the chance of it being a false positive is higher, so we can't say for sure that the patient has a disease. The next statistic is something called specificity. Specificity answers the question, did we catch people without the disease on accident? The other way to think of it is the percentage of people without a disease who have a negative test, or true negatives divided by true negatives plus false positives. In this case, our specificity is 96.5%. Another way to look at this would be to define a very specific test. A very specific test tries to make sure we're only catching people with the disease. And so it has very few false positives, but also fewer true positives. It will, however, have more false negatives, people who are labeled negative but might have the disease, and it will have more true negatives. The result is that a specific test that's positive makes us feel pretty sure that the patient has the disease and it rules in a condition, but if a specific test is negative, we may be, the patient may still have the disease. Our next statistic is positive predictive value. And this goes the other way. If a test is positive, how sure can we be that the patient has the disease? or the percentage of people with a positive test who have the disease. This is true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. And in this case, it's 79%. The other version of this is the negative predictive value. Or if a test is negative, how sure are we that the patient doesn't have the disease? Or the percentage of patients with a, with a negative test who do not have the disease. This would be false negatives divided by true negatives plus false negatives, and in our population, it's 95%. It's important to note that prevalence has an important effect on positive and negative predictive value. So this is our study parameters, and we can see that we have 15 people out of 100 with the disease, which is a 15% prevalence. And these were our results for this test in that population. But say we were looking for heart failure in a cardiology clinic. We might have a much higher prevalence, up, up around 85%. So if we put those numbers in and take the sensitivity of the test, we could tell that we would probably have 62 true positives and 23 false negatives. If we take the specificity of the disease, we could see we would have one false positive and 14 true negatives. So the sensitivity and specificity wouldn't change. But if we try and calculate the positive predictive value, it would be 62 divided by 63, which is 98%, a big increase from before. And the negative predictive value is 22 out of 37, which is 62%. All of a sudden, just because we changed the prevalence of the disease, the positive predictive value increased and the negative predictive value decreased. This is important to note. Let's say we took a test that was just a coin flip and flipped a coin at random. If we had a population where every single person had the disease and we flipped a coin every time the coin said the patient has the disease, it would be right. If we have a population where nobody has the disease, every time the coin says that a patient has the disease, it's wrong. So the prevalence of a disease affects the positive and negative predictive value regardless of how good or bad the test is. Increasing prevalence increases positive predictive value and decreases negative predictive value. Increasing the prevalence of a disease without changing the severity of a disease has very little effect on the sensitivity and specificity of a test. So from this talk, you should know that a sensitive test that is negative is useful to rule out a disease. You should also know that a specific test that is positive helps rule in a disease. Also, sensitivity and specificity do not depend on prevalence. They only depend on disease severity and test parameters. On the other hand, positive and negative predictive value depend on the test specifically, as well as on the disease severity and prevalence. The next step will be combining the information we learned from the first talk 
on the prevalence of a disease in a population, as well as the pretest probability and treatment and testing thresholds with the parameters that we learned about these tests to take care of our patient and help make evidence-based decisions about the patient's care.